The subcostal view should always be used when you need to rule in or out aortic stenosis or outflow tract obstruction. Most of the time you get excellent alignment with the aortic valve and it also avoids the dangers of accidentally catching the tricuspid regurgitation jet and misinterpreting that as your peak aortic velocity. I'll show you more about that at the end of this video. If you have a low frequency phased array probe, this can often really help for this view, even on smaller dogs. If you don't, just be sure to reduce your frequency on the probe that you do have. I think a lot of people are put off from using this view because it never looks like it does in the textbooks. The good news though is that we're not so worried about the imaging from this view. What we'll be using is our continuous wave Doppler and that performs surprisingly well even when you feel like you're scanning blind. If you have somebody to hold the patient, it's good to get them to crunch their legs together a little bit just to soften those abdominal muscles so that you get a better chance of getting a good view. I'm going to rely on this dog's cooperation and I have the marker with my thumb on it and I'm putting the marker towards myself. It doesn't matter so much in this view. If you do it the other way around, that's absolutely fine. The priority here is just getting the aortic valve. So the first thing I see is the liver means I'm in the right place and I'm going to change my alignment now so that the tail of the probe is going flatter towards the dog and the head is going more cranially. So liver and now I'm tilting and I'm getting the heart in view. You might have to adjust your hand position so your hand doesn't get in the way. I'm pushing in a little bit just gently. If you go too far, if you make it too flat of an angle, you'll lose the valve and you'll just get the two ventricles. You'll just get left and right ventricle like this. In which case, tilt back until you see that bright white line of the aortic valve. Now, the views on this dog are not amazing, but they're certainly a lot better than you get in most patients. In some patients, you'll only see that bright white line of the aortic valve. And in some, you actually won't see anything at all. But can you see how my alignment is so good? The way the heart is aligned from this view is it, so perfect that actually you could almost do this completely blind. So it's worth it, even if you can't see anything at all, it's worth just putting that continuous wave Doppler on, just adjusting your hand position slightly, and you might be lucky, you might get a trace anyway. So I'm going to put my continuous wave beam straight down through the valve. And here I have her peak aortic velocity. In this particular dog, we also have aortic regurgitation, so there'd be no harm in me adjusting my baseline down, changing my scale, and getting myself a nice aortic regurgitation trace here as well. The other view we can use to get an aortic trace is the apical five chamber view. If you have a patient in whom you suspect aortic stenosis or outflow tract obstruction, you'll probably be using continuous wave Doppler because you're expecting a high velocity that's going to exceed the range of your pulse wave. The problem is that if you don't adjust your view on screen, the way the continuous wave beam cuts through the aortic valve, it will also cut out the other side through the tricuspid valve. If your patient has tricuspid regurgitation and if they even have elevated pulmonary pressures, then you might end up catching the tricuspid regurgitation jet and thinking that the velocity of that is your aortic outflow velocity. If you like this video, there are so many more useful resources we'd love to share with you. We have a regular newsletter, a Facebook community where you can share your scans and get feedback and second opinions from others, and of course, our signature training program. Our training program builds those solid foundations upon which you can add new skills without feeling overwhelmed or like you're on your own. If you'd like more information, you can email me. My name is Catherine, I'm an echocardiographer, and there are also links to other resources in the description below.